Hey, hi, listen. I'm the Great Orbax, and this is Dr. Massa. Today, we're here to discuss free body diagrams. Okay. Mike? <laughs> so, we know that forces can act on an object to cause an object's motion. And it's true. One, one way to sort of make sure that we're accounting for all the relevant forces in a problem is to draw what we call a free body diagram. Or an FBD. All right. So let's take an example of uh, a guy or a girl sitting on a sled on a slope and uh, look at the forces acting on them and relate that to the motion. All right. Well, one of the ways that we look at free body diagrams is to first take our mass and reduce it to a point mass. Perfect. There. Okay. So what forces are acting on the slide? Force of gravity acting down. <laughs> so force of gravity acting down. <laughs> Okay, the sled's resting against an incline, so that contact uh, means that there's going to be a normal force. And the normal force always is perpendicular to the surface of a contact. So let me draw a normal force here. And it hasn't been stated whether this is frictionless or not, uh, assuming that there is some sort of friction and that the sledder is actually going down the hill. But the friction always acts opposite the direction of motion, meaning that if they're sledding down, that friction is acting back up against. And if it's motion involved, then we're going to use kinetic friction. But if it was that the sledder was there and just stuck in place, the, there would be static friction holding them. Either way, it's still acting in the same direction. Right. So there's a free body diagram. There's all the forces acting on it, and we can use that to relate to the motion of the sledder. Now, we have these rules here for free body diagrams, and how do those relate? The first one is we only draw the forces that are acting on our object. Right. So we have to make sure we include everything. Okay. So then. What's the difference between the first and the second rule? This one says no force is caused by the object. Okay. Uh, so the sledder might be exerting forces on the surroundings, and we can't include those because it's only the forces acting on the sledder that dictates the sledder's motion. Okay. What's an internal force? Um, an internal force. So we're treating the sled and the sledder as a single object. And, and if you were sitting on a sled, there might be friction between you and the seat of the sled. But as that's all inside the object, the force of friction here would be ignored. That's internal okay. to the... And motion. Okay, well, all right, we talked about whether the sled's moving downwards or right. not. We can describe that with, say, a velocity or maybe an acceleration vector. We just need to make sure that that vector doesn't make it in here because we're going to be using this diagram to look at forces that cancel out or add together. So an extraneous, another vector there might just mess up the math. 